Hello and welcome. Today we're gonna to be making your Views on the Road favorite recipe for red beef tamales. You guys got this recipe to three million views. We're highly grateful. The only thing we're gonna do here is shorten it for you. Now let's get started. For this recipe, you're gonna need four pounds of chuck beef. And you're gonna place that in your pan, which I set on a medium high. Next, you wanna add enough water to cover your beef. And once you see that you've covered your beef, make sure to add about two to three cups more of water, just in case a lot of it evaporates. So go ahead and continue to boil for another 10, 15 minutes, and then we're gonna show up right here and skim all those impurities. And after 15 minutes, I'm gonna start removing all of the impurities. For those of you that haven't purchased these skimmers, Cloud and I use them all the time, and so does the Views Club. She will link it in the description so you can take a look at what they're called, around how much they cost, and if you find them cheaper somewhere else, go for it. Once you've removed the impurities, go ahead and add your chicken bouillon, or you can use salt, whatever you're comfortable with. We're not pressuring you. That was one and a half tablespoons of nor chicken bouillon. I'm using the natural one and if you're using the regular one, use one tablespoon and adjust to taste after everything's cooked, okay? Next, you're gonna add half an onion and a whole garlic bulb. You're gonna add 18 to 20 guajillo chiles. If they're all small, you're gonna wanna go with 20. If they're a little bit larger, go with 18. And we are gonna cook our guajillo chiles in here for a good, I wanna say 20. 20, 30 minutes. And they're de de-seeded, right? Yeah, I removed the seeds and the stems. They're clean. Make sure to press them into the broth so that way they cook and they steam properly. And next, we're just gonna continue to boil for another 20 minutes while we get uh, while we remove our chiles, but our beef is gonna continue to cook for about two to two and a half hours until it's nice, soft, and tender. Our garlic is nice and soft, and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set it to the side, I'm gonna squeeze them out of their little pods, and I'm gonna start removing the chiles only. I'm gonna continue to boil everything else with the onion as is. And now you're just gonna blend until smooth. And boom, done, amigos. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna set aside one cup of this chili blend and the remaining chili blend we're gonna pour into our shredded beef. It's been give or take two and a half hours and you're gonna see that your beef is just fall apart. Look at, look at that, isn't that beautiful? So I'm gonna continue to shred the remaining beef in here, which is very easy to do. I just give it a little squeeze and <laughs> put the fork away everyone, put the fork away. I'm just about done shredding my beef and I didn't have to use a fork, which I was really excited about. Oh, I'm just so happy that this is so tender. Like, isn't that amazing? Someone slammed your door. Why are they upset? I think the air pulled the door. Oh, you're making <laughs> things up, Cloud. I am. <laughs> well, it's the holidays. You're supposed to start some kind of drama. You are starting drama since we don't have any anymore. Wow, Thank I like goodness. I like this life. Friends, if you like life, go ahead and pour your chili right on into your mixture just like this. And I am gonna use a little bit of this broth, shake it up in my blender because we need all that sauce. Can't believe you've been flirting so much. Excuse me, man. <laughs> Excuse me? I made an announcement on Azonia that I will not be doing that. Okay, so someone you guys gave will me leave feedback. Her. Someone gave me feedback that, um, cause I said, there's nothing wrong with, there's, yeah, there's nothing wrong with flirting. And the person said, um, there is if they like you and that's leading them on. Oh my gosh, that's Nobody horrible. said that to me in all these years of me flirting. So. I don't think, we're women, it doesn't work the same. It doesn't? No. Have I, I haven't flirted with you so you wouldn't know. Well, if you're flirting with a lot of people at once, that's, that can be dangerous. I don't flirt like that. I don't do that anymore. I don't do that. I just pick one and that's it, girl. I don't do that <laughs> anymore. Views Club Junior, don't listen to your Thea Cloud right now. <laughs> I just love everyone. <laughs> oh, friends, this combination here is not just good for your tamales filling. It goes good over rice for your burritos, your tacos. It's just wonderful. And I just want to eat this whole bowl. Mm. A apparently, it looks like a bowl to me, so I'm, <laughs> I'm going to eat the whole pot. With some tortillas. Yes, yeah, some flour tortillas. Ooh, yummy, yummy. I'm going to continue to 
uh, boil here for about 10 minutes on a medium heat just so that all the flavors combine and while this is going on I'm gonna go and get started on our masa. You'll need one cup of lard and we're gonna be using two pounds of masa. Optional to season your masa, you can use a little bit extra of chicken bouillon or salt. Optional but not necessary, we like to fill our tamales with a little bit of surprises. We have some green olives, some Anaheim peppers that have been thinly sliced, a russet potato that has been thinly sliced, and some raisins. And friends, this is go time. For those of you doing this by hand, there is no time to wimp out. We are about to get this piece of lard and we are gonna dissolve it until it's nice and soft. And if you guys have seen the tamal video before that Cloud and I did, it's interesting. It's a lot of fun. And we are gonna make sure to mix really well for a good eight minutes, I would say. And once you get it nice and soft, it's easier for you to just toss it in a bowl and slam it. And you're gonna notice that it starts to get very, very shiny. And that's when you're, when you're ready to start adding your masa. Nice and fluffy, soft. See that? Just smears everywhere. And now I'm just gonna start adding our masa and mixing it with the lard. Once you've combined your masa with your lard, you're gonna start adding your sauce. And I add about half a cup first. I mix and then I start checking for the consistency of our masa, oh my gosh, that's beautiful. That color just makes me so happy, it makes it feel like home. Yes, I agree with you, I'm just smiling. <laughs> <laughs> if you know this is gonna taste good, go ahead and leave us a comment and you can give us a thumbs up, we like those. And you might as well subscribe since you're already here. Yep, and if you don't have a heart to do any anything, if you leave me a flower emoji, I'll be really happy. Uh, you'll get my attention. <laughs> <laughs> I can already uh, feel that I need more sauce, so I'm going to go ahead and pour all of the remaining sauce. And now I'm going to be here mixing until I can get my masa to float in a water cup. And I'll show you right now. You're going to want to do the same. Sometimes I do this. Sometimes I mix it like this. I gather it. And then I go to town. And you don't need to hear me huffing and puffing. We'll so be back. I'll be back. And our masa looks fluffy. It feels like it's ready. It feels like if you were to put your hands through whipped cream, that's how soft it feels. So now we're gonna check if it's gonna float, which I can see that it is. Take a bowl with water, and you're just gonna drop a little piece of masa in there. There's more to just the lard floating friends. They both have to float and combine well for the best tamales. That was a big piece and it's floating. Oh, we couldn't see. I'll try it again. You see it just floats to the top. And we're ready to start making our tamales. You want to soak your corn husk in warm water for a minimum of 45 minutes to an hour. We want them to be nice and soft and pliable for the time, um, for when it's time to fill our tamales. Before we get started, I get asked, what side should you uh, spread your masa on? Somebody's like, oh, there's a, so a softer and smoother size. But then you get these that have these kind of ripples that you can see. They're pretty tough. And there is no smooth side to these. So you're going to have to pick the smoothest side from the ones that look a little bit different like this. And usually, like, when they have a curve, it makes it a lot easier. Oh, it's a little curve. It's going to go right in here. Take your corn husk and dry it just a little bit, just like that. And now you're gonna take a scoop of your masa and you're gonna start spreading it. 
And if you mixed it well, this is a super easy process. You want to make sure to spread evenly. If you want your tamales to seal properly, make sure to add to the ends right here at the bottom that you add an even amount. And if they don't close on you, that's okay. They still taste really good. And once I have an even spread, I just go over in the same direction again. You kind of learn how to do your own groove to this. And this is really smooth masa. Love it. Take your desired amount of beef which usually ends up being about two tablespoons, depending on the size of your corn husk. This one's a little bit larger, so I'm gonna add a little bit more. I'm gonna make it nice and big. Look at all that beef. Uh, this stuff is really good, the filling. So if you're gonna make some and you're gonna be picking at it, maybe uh, make three pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and add your olive, your Anaheim pepper, your potato and one or two raisins, three if you'd like. And now we're just gonna seal nice and tight. Pull it over like a little blanket, push back. And if you have any juice pouring out, you can just pour it right back into your mixture, just like that. Give that a fold. And I'm gonna start setting them to the side. Before I do that, I'm gonna show you how to make one with just beef, because I know some of you are cringing right now and you're like, she's a yo no sabo. No, I do know, so I know you want the ones with just beef, and that's what I'm gonna give you. <laughs> and for the sake that this is more of an educational tutorial about tamales, I wanna show you that you're gonna get some corn husk in your pack that are just not gonna work out, but that doesn't mean that you have to let it go to waste. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna smear a little bit of our masa. And remember, these are homemade tamales. They're not your restaurant perfection <laughs> tamales, which are delicious too, don't get me wrong. You just wanna smear a little bit of your masa there and place the other leaf right over like this. And that extra masa is one of the favorites, especially if you're gonna use this the next day for your fried tamales for breakfast. Ooh, you want that extra masa. So go ahead and scoop your masa and we're gonna spread it the same way we did our first tamal. Smooth it out. Yes, we do want the fried tam uh, tamal, but with the uh, egg on top as well. You and the Views Club need to <laughs> settle down. I'm gonna make a video just about fried tamales for breakfast. Así con chilaquiles is gonna be like fully loaded breakfast for you guys. It's tradition to tell you that we do it every year. You guys really do come for me and I love you for that. <laughs> I think sometimes everybody thinks I get upset. No, I just get in the zone when I'm cooking. And next, you want to fill it with a lot of beef. Oh, that's a lot. It's so juicy. <laughs> Let me pour some of that juice because I already know what's happening. And now we're going to fold it like a nice little blanket. Seal it nice and tight. Ooh, that juice is just pouring. Mmm, que rico. Oh, we're going to set it to the side and I'm going to continue making uh, the rest of our tamales. What I did is I just crumbled a few foils, placed them here at the bottom. My evaporera is uh, in a box right now. So this method is familiar to me. We use this a lot growing up. So all you want to do is you want to add about uh, two cups of water. You don't want to, you don't want your foil to flow and you don't want it to go over the foil, but we want it to be enough to produce enough steam for the tamales. I'm gonna place a parchment paper and I just slit a few little holes through it to allow the steam to come through. We're gonna place that right at the bottom. You're gonna place a plate right in the center and I'm gonna start placing our tamales right on in. And next I'm gonna start placing the tamales against the bowl, just like this, into a nice circle. We're all done placing our tamales and we're ready to steam our tamales. We're gonna bring our pot to a boil. Once you hear that boil, you're gonna lower your temperature to a simmer. I'm gonna be placing a kitchen cloth over the top and then the lid, and we are gonna allow this to steam for about 30 to 45 minutes. And boom, done. Our tamales have been steaming for about 40 or so minutes and they are fully cooked. All you wanna do is let them rest for at least 15 minutes before you serve them. 
because if you serve them right now, it's not gonna work out. So please just let them sit for a little bit and then serve your tamales. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Uh. Ooh, let me help you. And now I'm gonna unwrap a tamal for Bebe to taste. Bebe is my son, for those of you that don't know. Let me see. Say ah. Uh. It's delicious. Oh, you like the masita? We have a very special taste tester today, and it is... You want to give us your name? Me! <laughs> Yay! Hey, hey, bebe! Me! We go, he goes by bebe. Go ahead, bebe. Buen provecho! These are your favorite tamales, I hear. I wonder what they taste like. I haven't had one yet. Mmm. Are they delicious? They are? Very delicious. Ooh. Do you like all the stuff that's in there? Like the carnita and the olives? You'll eat yeah. all of that? Do you prefer the beef or the chicken? Beef. Ooh, that's <laughs> steam. Careful. Oh. He can handle the heat. <laughs> he can handle that heat. He's your child. That smile, oh my goodness, I love it. <laughs> Can I feed you? Or is that gonna be cringe? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe cuteness. he didn't like the tamales, you should feed me. Let's try I'm gonna positions. Feed, yes, <laughs> we're gonna have to feed Cloud in a minute. Guys, I was just fed, so <laughs> I, I'm exaggerating. But these are that good. Do you like them beefy? Yeah. Beef, yeah. Do you have a tip for us, sister, for the tamales? Um, I think I've shared a lot of the tips. If you go too heavy on your um, seasoning, like the cup of chili sauce that we added to your masa, if you go too heavy on that, then you're gonna get more of the sticking to the outer parts of your masa. So it also depends on the kind that you're purchasing, the brand, and there's a lot of variables. So just take it easy. You guys got this? Can you make tamales for the holidays of it? Yeah. You gonna be able to do it? All right, I'm gonna hold you to it. When you're 90 years old and I'm like 100 and something, I'm still gonna feed you. Just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> you should definitely eat this every year or five times a year <gasps> wow five I'll times you a year, year. Right here, yeah. and you're gonna do the dishes though. you got the dishes all right let's do it <laughs> bye adios as always cloud and i are wishing you the best we absolutely adore you and we adore you so much we're gonna be waiting for you during the holiday season or um, Friendsgiving Day, Christmas Day, we're gonna be waiting for you uh, because we do get a lot more comments about what's going on with my masa, what do I do with this, and we are here to help you. So we don't want you to worry. If you send us a comment with a lot of details, we're gonna be right there to assist you. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye!